Hello everyone. I'm going to use this video to show one more portfolio immunization example. And I'm going to share my screen now. And uh, let's look at the example here together. It says that if a bank has a liability of 5 million, that will mature after two years, which means that the bank has to pay 5 million after two years. Of course, the bank is worried about price risk, or we also call it interest rate risk. So the bank decide, decides to do the portfolio immunization um, there are two annual coupon bonds available. The first one is a four-year annual coupon bond with a coupon rate of 10%. The second one is a one-year annual coupon bond with a coupon rate of 8%. And the current market yield is 9%. And of course, after one year, the market yield can be 7%, 9%, or 11% according to the professional forecast. And I put all the input information over here. The required amount after two years is 5 million. And the market rate currently is 9%. And then um, the duration of this lump sum is two because as the duration of a lump sum is just equal to the time to maturity. So the total investment today, basically the NPV of this liability is gonna be 5 million divided by 1 plus the market rate to the power of 2. And this is basically, basically the input for the liability. And let's take a look at those two coupon bonds. The first one is the 4-year 10% bond. Coupon rate is 10%, face value is 1,000. The second one is a 8% bond. It's 1-year bond. Coupon rate is 8%. Face value is 1,000. And then we can calculate the price and duration for these two bonds because those information are needed to do the portfolio immunization. So let's look at this four-year bond first. So we're going to receive four coupon payments at the end of each year. Each coupon payment equals to 100. I'm going to press F4 to make this number fixed. So then we know that at the end of each year, we're gonna receive 100 as coupon payment. And at the last year, at the end of year four, we're gonna receive $1,000 additionally because this is the principal amount or face value amount. Also, I'm gonna make this cell face. So column D is gonna show the discount factor is going to equal to 1 divided by 1 plus the market rate to the power of years. I'm going to make the market yield fixed by press 4, uh, F4, and then we can draw this. So pressing the value of each um, payment is going to be equals to the payment times the discount factor. So we know the price of the bond is going to be the sum of all the present value of the future cash flows. Wait, so basically we get the price of this bond. And to get the duration, we need to find the weight it will be the present value divided by the price. So we can just fix the price L20. And then we can safely draw down. And then we can use the number of years column D times F, which is the weight for the year, and draw down. Summing up, that's the duration of this bond. So the price of this four year bond equals to L20, sell L20. The duration of this bond is 3.5, around 3.5. This is the information for this four year bond. And then let's next focus on this one year bond. The price, I'm going to use this present value function embedded in Excel. Rate is going to be the market rate, number of years, one year. Payment is going to be 8% times 1,000. 
case value 1000 type is going to be zero because all the corporate bond um, pays the uh, bond pay the uh, pay the coupon payment at the end of each year. So you're going to find this number is negative. Remember this negative sign means cash outflows. You'll pay $990, you're going to receive $80 coupon payment and 1000 face value. So we're going to add a negative, negative sign to make this number positive. Duration of a one year bond is going to be one because we're going to receive a lump sum, including $80 coupon payment and 1000 face value. And duration of a lump sum equals to the time to maturity. So we have all the information for the, those two available annual coupon bonds. Then we need a, in the next step, we need to find out what's the percentage that we invest in each of the bonds. So the duration of the four year bond is over here. Duration of one year bond is equal to E, cell E16. And then we just write, randomly assign a weight for this four year bond. And this one year bond weight is going to be equal to one minus this four year bond weight. Basically, we invest 100% of capital in two of these bonds, uh, two bonds. And one bond, we invest, uh, for example, 50%, another bond is going to equal to 100% minus 50%. Of course, if we invest 10% in this four-year bond, the 90% of capital should be invested in this one-year bond. Then we can find out our duration of our asset. So it's the duration of the four-year bond times the percentage of the four-year bond, plus the duration of one-year bond times the percentage of one-year bond. We're gonna find out that our duration is shorter then what we want. Then we're going to use this solver to find the optimal percentage. So the objective is this duration of the assets is B26. And we want to make the value of B26 equals to 2 by changing C24, by changing the percentage that we invest in this four year bond. And we will keep um, this is solver solution. Of course, you can use the equation um, to solve the linear equation showed in our PowerPoint PowerPoint to solve this equation. But uh, this uh, solver is definitely a quicker way. So our cash position equals to NTV, what we want, times the percentage here. And I'm going to make this NTV fixed by press F4. And the bond price, uh, bond price is over here. And then we can find out the bond position. It's the cash position divided by the price of bond. So bond position basically means um, how many shares we're going to buy. And we round this up so that we can get enough cash um, after these two years. So this 1,634 means that we're going to buy 1,634 shares of four-year bond. And we're going to buy 2,546 shares of this one year bond. So our total investment, so we're going to make this here, at t equal to zero. Let's just calculate this. So first, we needed to find out the bond price. We already know those information. And we're going to spend this amount of money, capital, on this four-year bond. The number of shares times the price of the bond. So let me just fix the number of shares over here. So we have, again, three scenarios. 
that the market yield drops to 7% or market yield is gonna increase to 11%. And the last scenario is when the yield peaks at 9%. And the capital invested in one year bond is going to be the price times how many shares of this one year bond will increase the number of shares. So our total portfolio value at the initial date at is equal to zero, equal to this amount, no matter which scenario it is because at t equal to zero, all the information is fixed. Then we check after a year what's going on. So after a year, the market yield changes to 9% or 7% or 11%. First, all the one-year bonds matures. All the one-year bonds mature. And we're gonna receive the cash. This is the, this is the bond position number of one year shares and each share sorry each share we're gonna receive cash we're gonna let's go back to the bond information we're gonna equals to the eight percent coupon rate times the face value plus the face value that's the cash we received because the one-year bond is mature, is mature, uh, matures. And then we, this four-year bond now has a three year left, but we can re we will receive the coupon payment. So the coupon payment will be the number of shares uh, we buy, we bought at equal to zero times the coupon payment of each share. And again, we're gonna fix all those numbers because these numbers are fixed under each scenario. So the total cash available will be the one-year bond matures and the cash we received and the coupon payment from this four-year bond. Of course, right now it's a three-year bond. The one-year passed, the three-year left. And then we needed to find out those are cash, but we cannot hold the cash for one more year. We need to invest it to earn a return. And we're gonna invest in this one year bond. So what we're gonna do is we need to find out the price of the one year bond. It will be capital value, the rate of the yield, one year payment is gonna be 8% times the face value and the face value. You can directly type $80 and $1,000, but I just want to um, use this input here to make it clear. And if we don't, we don't choose zero, again, the coupon payment will be at the end of each year. So that's why we choose zero. And then we put a negative sign so that we can get a positive number. And then we will make the coupon payment sales fixed. Face value fixed. We only allowed this market yield change in each scenario. This is this here, all fixed. This is the price of this one year bond under each scenario. Then we should buy one year bond. We, this is the cash divided by um, price of the bond. And we just take the integral of it. So we can get a number of shares. The number of shares of one year bond that we can buy. And of course we have residual cash and the residual cash can earn a market yield also. So the residual cash will be the total cash we receive minus the total cash we spend. So this is for the portfolio information after one year. Let's look at what, what's going on after two years. And the net, there are one year, after two years, there are 
one year bond matures again. So the number of shares of one year bond matures are those numbers we got at the end of year one. And the total cash we received is the number of shares of one year bond multiply the coupon payment received for each share. And the plus the face value. This is the total amount of cash we're going to receive under the state scenario. I'm going to make the coupon payment and the face value fixed and allowing the number of shares of bond vary in each scenario. So this is what we get. And the, then the next thing is this is four year bond. Right now it's a two year bond. So two year has been passed. And uh, we first uh, we will receive a coupon payment. And this is the number of shares we bought at t equal to zero. And the times the coupon payment each share is 10% times this face value. Make it fixed. So this is the cash received, uh, the coupon payment received from this four year bond or two year bond right now. And then we're going to sell all this two year bond. Actually, it's a four year bond, but after two years, it becomes a two year bond. And we need to find out the price of this originally four year bond. Right now, it's a two year bond. So the rate is market rate. Number of years is two. Payment is going to be 100, right? It's going to be 10% times 1,000. Face value, 1,000. And uh, finally, it's zero because all the coupon payment paid at the end of each year. And again, don't forget, add a negative sign to make the number positive. And we're going to fix the coupon payment and the face value and we're allowing the market rate to vary according to each scenario and finally we're going to sell all those two-year bonds and times the price multiply the price with the number of shares. We're going to fix the number of shares because the number of shares is fixed for each scenario. And then the residual cash is from the end of year one. We're going to find out the value, the current value it will be the residual cash times one plus the market yield because the residual cash also earn the market value, the market interest rate. And then our total portfolio position is going to be the cash we received from one year bond matures and the coupon payment from this four year bond and the, the capital by received by selling those four year bond and plus the residual cash. So you can say that's our portfolio value after uh, two years. All the portfolio value is greater than five million. Okay, so that's basically our, uh, you know, video. And if you have any question, feel free to share your question with me or your classmates. Thank you very much for watching.